So it, all of the writers want, want to reiterate for you and on your behalf that you are not a pop artist. I know. This is your moment to make it clear. I know. I did, well, I have this moment quite often. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'd like to reiterate the moment. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. You know, when I was young, I knew pop artists. And um, I was using common objects. But the people who are known as pop artists, the classic pop artists, I mean, like this guy Warhol, Rosenquist, were people who spoke about the outside world and were interested in using the outside world and popular culture to further their vision. And it never interested me. That's not what I was doing. I was using these objects which are familiar to all of us as metaphors for loss, for instance, or stand-ins for personal pain, for instance. Um, therefore, it put me out of the movement, as it were, in a pure way. But I don't anymore argue about it, because if that's what they want to say, it's okay with me. You know. I must say that the more I... It's not accurate, that's all. There you go. The, the more I page through catalogs and look at the works, the, the clearer it is to me that they are so far from pop yeah. and that, that coolness, that detachment from right. any personal involvement. I'm not, I'm not very cool. You are not. Yeah. You are a very... And, um, and uh, it, it, it has not necessarily held me in good stead amongst huge chunks of the art world like minimalists or, you know, color field painters or whatever. I mean, I, I really have, um, I, w I walk a very narrow road that's mine. And I'm, I'm just not interested in being the alumni of any school. Well, I don't, in the end, I don't think you are. You're certainly on a path that's all your own. It's, it's been a long voyage, yeah. and I'm um, I'm going down the road. All right. You know. Okay, so I, I did bring some pictures. The first of which is a print on the left called the Pro Council, and it's described in the catalog raisonné as a cardboard intaglio. So when I went up to see Jim and Diana in April, I had the chance to go over to the Pace print workshop and meet with Bill, who's the master printer there, and he pulled out the plate for this print, which is the image on the right, because I was so confused about what cardboard intaglio really meant. And I wonder if you could kind of describe it's, it. it, it a cardboard intaglio is, well, I was sitting with my friend and printer in Vienna about 15 years ago, and I said, can't we make a, an etching? Have you ever thought of making an etching that was like a charcoal drawing? So we on and on like this, we drinking a lot of wine and we're just thinking about it. And then six months later, he said to me, just try this. And he brought out this cardboard and I, I worked it with um, um, like dentist drills, things, uh, rotating tools that you can grind with, hobbyists use them, Dremel they're called here. Right, right. And I used grinders on it and I also built up the surface. This is, the hard part is built up with acrylic uh, resins and then the whole thing is coated with um, gloss medium, acrylic gloss medium and dried. So then you can wipe the plate just like an etching hmm. and it never wears out. And it's extremely effective to get big, black, heavy lines. Um, go back to the, um, like, like the background. Yeah. The background. You could never get that in a copper plate. I mean, it would be something different. Right. And on the heart itself, there are cracks showing and crackling, which is the acrylic drying. It was right. put on thick and it was drying underneath. And at, at a different yeah. rate. Yeah. yeah. Right. I. I, I was really happy to see the plate. It's a really exciting meeting. Yeah, it's, it was great to see how it all came together. And then I also brought out my new favorite print. 
And I w wanted to know if you could describe you and Julia working the woodcut background. This, the print is a combination of etching. The bird is uh, soft ground etching, and the background is woodcut. And the way that Jim's... But, we, but what I did was I didn't like when we printed just the background, the woodcut background, with the etching on top. So we printed it with... Um, we printed it and then we dipped it in solvent and it bled. And so I'm a big believer in not even additions. So, you know, when you number things, one over 20, forget it. It was, everyone is different. And so it's thrilling to build a new image each time. Yeah, there's, there are eight of these and each of them is very different from yeah. the rest. And you, you had described to me that Julia had um, inked the woodcut block, the background, with um, this mix of solvent and the ink, and then pushed with very gently with the heel of her hand instead of but also when washing it, was, it. When it went through the press, though, it, it spread out. You know, I, wouldn't the press have squashed it so completely as to be sort of even tone? It was probably, you mean it was printed print, print by I, hand? I think she did print it by That's how you described it to me. Maybe. All right. <laughs> I really don't care. I think <laughs> I was so pleased to see it upstairs. The image looked beautiful. What the hell's the difference? Oh, well, that's true. Oh, but, you know, the curator in me would like to know how it was made. Sometime, I think we should bring, you know, some of the master printers with us, and we can all have a chat. Well, we, no, we don't. They'd say, they, they've heard all this before from me. So this is, I showed you this when we saw each other in April. This is a photograph of the backside of the same sheet of paper, which kind of helps a little bit find the areas where it's woodcut. And I, I've always found it helpful to be able to see the back of it. So we're thrilled to have that one. So this, this is the heirloom. It's a rather large lithograph. That, and the color, I have to say, is terrible on the, the screen. Really it's awful. really off. I'm yeah. sorry. Um, Too bad. Yeah, it didn't. I, well, this is the second print that Jim gave us this winter, and um, when these two prints came in, there were so many. It was going to take up enough wall space that I was going to lose a lot of other things that I had already planned to use. So, I made this decision to keep the five hammer etudes, and this one is up in storage. So, but this is the second print for everyone who's asking me what it looks like. The color's terrible. So here's. A, the five hammer This isn't so fabulous either. Oh, <laughs> look how gray it is! It's what? awful. Come on, get a better camera. Let's go. All right. So I. Oh, man. <laughs> so these are the the, the original. Ah, these are the original yes. parts of the thing. Yeah. All right. So would you like me to describe how this yeah. works? Okay. So in 84, Jim worked with the Parisian master printer Aldo Chromalink on five plates, which you see here, and they were issued as this group, the New French Tools. And then a year later, two of the plates came together and were printed side by side on one sheet as Tools and Dreams, and the hearts got added floating above the tools that he'd furnished partially away with these fabulous new techniques that he's coming up with on the fly. And so then, well, let me go back. And so then the five hammer etudes is those same five plates with the hearts now removed and the five central hammers in the center of each of those plates. So the print upstairs is five plates on five sheets and the sheets have been taped and joined together to make that one long print, which by the way is framed in a black frame that Jim hates. Too heavy. Sorry to be difficult, really. But this is the way it is. I want to say about the hammers, how what I did, it's, it, they aren't etchings. They're, they are um, dry points over etchings. The hammers themselves are put in. I abraded the surface with, with hand tools and power tools to get these deep blacks, which are one, were once called dry point, but now could be all like engraving techniques and uh, it's just the copper being worked. And so then the reason the plates were revisited was that Chromalink retired, when was it, a year and a half ago and um, Jim got all of the plates back, over 100 and, what did you tell me, 150 plates? Yeah. So, 